Okay, right, let's uh, get to our final match to preview, then Newcastle taking on Leicester. Let's hear from Eddie Howe and Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, I've been in this situation before where we've we've played teams that have uh, played in Europe and to be honest, my experience is it doesn't have too much bearing on the next game. I think they've got a squad to cope. Um, a very good group of players. They've, they've had a lot of injuries um, throughout the season, but they've now returned, so their squad looks a lot stronger. And they've got a manager that's very experienced in managing that situation. So, as I said, in my experience, it's never really influenced the next game at all. So we expect a, a full-strength Leicester, who are in very good form. Is the one ground where you want to make a good start because if the crowd get behind the team and, and you just feel it roll down out of the stands and, and to support the team. So uh, it, it really is. It's, it's a great atmosphere to be involved in. And, uh, and it is, it means everything to, to the people of Newcastle. I think it's done great going in. Um, they're a remarkable job, like you say, at Bournemouth. There were two stints. Um, great opportunity to go into a huge club. And, um, and I think he's, he's done terrific. He's obviously, the, the window was, was massive for them. And they signed some really, really good players. And then you see the style of which he's trying to impose on the team. And I think they'll be looking to get through to the end of the season and continue to develop that. And then pre-season will be uh, an opportunity for him to strengthen the squad. Leicester come into this game off the back of reaching their first ever major European semi-final last night in the Europa Conference League. And I tell you what, it's a tasty matchup as well, facing Jose Mourinho's Roma mm. in that semi-final, Steve. Yeah. Um, one to look forward to. Jose and, uh, and Brendan Rodgers. He's one of his predecessors who worked yeah. underneath him at Chelsea. So, yeah, uh, listen, yeah, it's, it's magnificent for Leicester. They've kind of gone under the radar, haven't they, this season? They've had a lot of injuries. And where they've been the last two seasons, they've never really sort of... You know, they, they, there was one season, was it last season or the season before, they was in the top four throughout the whole season and dropped out at the very two end. Two seasons. Yeah. Row, yeah. So, yeah. It, they, it, they've kind of, sort of... Where all the, the noise has been on other teams, of the Man United and the Arsenal Spurs, Leicester just feel like they've just sort of hovered underneath and not really been spoken about. Yeah, they underperformed for large parts yeah. of the season, but this second part, this kind of middle-to-end bit that we're in now, they've really kicked into mm. gear, Farah. Mm. Do you think their focus now will be solely on winning the Europa Conference League? Or do they still actually have an outside chance of getting a European spot by winning their games in hand and climbing up the table? Yeah, look, I think they have to focus on the Europa League. I think, look, Brendan Rodgers, you know, was criticised really early on in the season. They had a lot of injuries, Leicester. And the, the fact that he's been able to bring young players... Jewsby Hall this season, cool. fantastic wow. player. Yeah. You know, he's been able to bring young players through and still keep them consistent, still look, fighting for that, for that top, you know, sixth position in, in the league now in the semi-final. Look, he won the FA Cup with them only a, a year or two ago. So he's done a fantastic job with them. And, you, you know, with what I'm saying this season, with the injuries that he's had, to be in a position that they are yeah. now at the, the back end of the season, I think, you know, as you say, he's gone completely under the radar and quietly gone about his business and Leicester in a fantastic position. Yeah, what's the reflection on Brendan Rodgers now? Because it's been a bit of an <laughs> up and down season in terms of the media reaction to yeah. him and how he's been getting on. Yeah, I think there's two, there's two big factors in the season for, for, for Leicester. One, I think the, de the injuries, the defensive injuries in particular, I think the return of Fafana Fafan. in particular yeah. has, has been the difference, really, and Johnny Evans, but Fafana is... A class player. I mean, mm. he's an absolutely brilliant player. But I also think Brendan, he probably wouldn't like me for saying this, but I think he lost a bit of focus in the season. I think perhaps he was distracted himself by the talk of Manchester United and possibly moving on and all of that. He probably hate me for saying this, actually. But I think there was a, that was a factor. Yeah. And he's I think not he, watching, don't worry. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, but he's probably, you know, refocused himself a little bit in terms of the, the task in hand and, and to sort of, you know, get the season back on track. And, mm. um, yeah, I think they're the two, the two big issues. But, you know... I'd never the criticism he faced earlier in the season. I got to say, you know, I, I thought was a bit ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a very good manager. He's done a very good job at Leicester. Won the FA Cup last yeah. season. You know, very, okay, they missed out on the Champions League, and there's that that, that, that kind of sense of you know, have, have they choked at the last minute? But even to be in competition for those places again, yeah. you know, fantastic job he's done. And you've got to look, and it's like all these things with managers. You've got to look at the overall work. Mm. You know, what are they doing with that club? You know, he and I know. It, when he leaves Leicester, he will go to a bigger club. Yeah. So that, that in itself yeah. tells me that he's a good manager. Yeah. yeah, and I think you both got quite excited about Keenan Dewsbury Hall there. <laughs> so tell us, what qualities does he have, Steve, that 
that get you off your seat? Someone that's flourished, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Given an opportunity, given a chance. Someone that's taken the shackles off. His work rate on and off the ball has been superb. The way he tracks back, the tackle here. And then it's like, what can you do? You know, it's not just pass it simple, kind of pass it forward and get forward. You know, his goals as well. He's, he's, he feels like, it feels to me that he's been involved. I mean, this pass here was absolutely fantastic. Look at this, that splitting pass there. Yeah, but it, it, it just feels like he's been involved in everything he, yeah. good that Leicester have done this year. And a lot of that as well will come down to Brennan Rodgers because Brennan loves working with youngsters, someone that's going to take on board information and want to learn as well. Mm. And he looks like that, that type of player. Yeah, whenever they attack, it seems though pretty much anything positive yeah. tends to go through him at the moment. Mm. What about Newcastle? Are we all happy in the studio that they're safe and they'll be fine this season, Farah? Yeah, they climbed away, I think, from, from the relegation. You can look at it in, they're still only seven points from the drop, but... I think that, you know, they found their feet now, haven't they? And I think they've picked up some really good results. I think they've been consistent. Yeah, look here, I think it's seven points, isn't it? Off the drop. Um, what are they? Ten. ten now, ten. Is it ten? Yeah, oh, so they've climbed away. away. But, but yeah, I think, look, they're, they're, they're safe. And I think yeah. that they'll have a big summer, won't they? And they'll rebuild uh, with Eddie Howe. I think he, he's done a fantastic job since coming in. They went for a massive period of not being able to win games, mm. you know, on the bounces. So to, to find that form and go on a really good run, it's been fantastic. I'm looking forward to the summer to see, you know, where they go and what direction they go and all the money they've got and all the mm. talk around it, who's going to come in, who's going to go out. But they're safe and they're, they're going to be in the Premier League and hopefully Eddie Howe gets the, the, the money to bring in a squad of players yeah. that he'd like. Yeah, what do, what do you think their focus is on in the summer in terms of players? I, I think they might surprise everyone and not do an awful lot. Oh, yeah, that's a bit I, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you well, to give us the names. It's not going to be killing Mbappe. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I suspect they won't spend anywhere near as much money as you think they will. I think they spent more money in the January window than they expected to. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think, although they've got obviously extremely wealthy owners, I think there is a clear plan not to sort of, you know, spend huge mm -hmm. amounts of money straight away, partly because you, you can't. It's, no. it's much more harder to do it nowadays, obviously with financial fair play and the rules in place and so on. But I just don't think they're going to go in there and do that. Yeah. I think they just had to do it in the January window. And I think, to be fair to them, for, for a new ownership coming in, and we looked at it, they haven't got a sporting director, they haven't got a structure in place, they had a brilliant window. Yeah. They had a fantastic yeah. window, a brilliant window. So yeah. they've, they've bought really, really well. And those players are coming like Bruno Gamarish, Kieran Trippier, they're mm. going to be there for the future. Yeah. So if they can remodel the squad a little bit, but I just don't, ex I don't expect at this stage that they go out and spend huge amounts of money. Do you not think the fans will want that, though? The fans are going to want I don't more, think they right? will. No. You don't I think, think they're the okay, no. Newcastle fans. But, but where do you see this squad of players that they have now? Where do, what do you see them achieving next I year? Think, well, I think it now, that especially if, we, if Dan Ashworth goes in, which yeah, it looks yeah. like it's going yeah. to be, Fantastic, there's going yeah. to be steady, small increments. And that is how Eddie will like it as well. Mm. Eddie's exactly like David Moyes. If someone's not right that's going to come in and fit the model, you won't have them. Mm. And, that, and, and, yeah. it will, and hopefully we're, we're saying that Eddie Howe's still going to be there and it will be steady increments at a time the window that they had the players that they brought in Trippier your Dan Burns Wood survival that was key now they got that and as I say I think I agree with steady increments getting the right players in we've seen it before too much Fulham when they come up yeah. stupid money that they spent silly players that they bought straight back down OK, well, look, we've got to the end of the show now, guys. Steve, you've done our predictions this week, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Shall we have a look what you've gone for? Let's take a look at what Steve thinks is going to happen in all six matches. So after telling us all that Brighton have got a good chance after beating Arsenal last week, you've gone for a 2-0 win for Spurs. I said, I said they've got a chance. <laughs> Is that a good chance? <laughs> Talk <laughs> us through these then. Uh, I think Spurs at home, they're going to be strong. Um, I think there's going to be goals in that. And I think I just don't see Brighton scoring, which is what they've lacked. I see a real bounce back from, from Manchester United. I know there's injuries, but I really see them coming out of the trap, especially at home against Norwich. Arsenal, I see them winning. Uh, the youngsters there will, will do the job and I, I still see Southampton conceding goals the 1-1 one, one draw in the, in the top right -hand corner with Watford and Brentford is, I think that's just got a draw all over it <laughs> yeah, fair I enough. actually did go for a Burnley away win until Sean Dyche okay. um, changed so I've gone for West Ham now yeah. and I think there's going to be goals at Newcastle and I think that's going to be a draw if you want goal scorers so Maximum will probably get one or two OK, nice. OK, well, we'll see how you get on with those. And very quickly before we go, one of your former sides, Fulham, could be promoted yeah. to the Premier League this evening if they beat yeah. Derby. Wow, that would be amazing to see them back, wouldn't it? Amazing to see them back. And they deserve it as well. They took the championship by storm, scoring goals, got plenty of points. So, yeah, really good to see them back. OK, 
Sid, Farah, Jason, good to see you all. Thank you for your company today. Enjoy the FA Cup semi-finals and enjoy all the Premier League matches this weekend. We will see you next time on the Weekend Preview. Bye-bye.